Here's a structural mechanics question which deals with the idea of transverse shear. And this is the kind of thing that you might most likely see in your second year if you're doing some kind of engineering, usually aerospace, mechanical or civil engineering or ship science in some cases. So <clears throat> for this question, we're going to look at a symmetrical cross section, which is an I section whose dimensions we know. And we also know that this section experiences a vertical shear force, uh, which is 200 kilonewtons in magnitude. And the line of action coincides with the center. It says here that it coincides with the center line of the web of the section. So in other words, this force is, you know, along this line, basically. So it's not off center. It's not producing a twist or anything weird like that. It's just acting downwards along that center line of the of the cross section so automatically we can write that v is equal to 200 kilo newtons and by the way if there are any other similar questions that you'd like to see uh, let me know in the comments so for part a we're being asked to find the value of the shear stress in the web at its junction with the flange so we can write that the shear stress, we'll write the, the formula first. So it's V times Q over I Z Z times the thickness. Okay, so that's what we're going to use. And as usual, we pretty much know most of it. Actually, we don't really know the second moment of area. So we'll have to calculate the second moment of area, which shouldn't be too difficult because this is symmetric. So we automatically know where the centroid is. So the centroid is here. It's in the middle of everything, basically. So IZZ is going to be equal to IZZ1. So let's say that this section at the bottom is 1, the tall one is 2, and the one at the top is 3. So IZZ1 plus IZZ2 plus IZZ3. Okay, so let's find them one at a time. By the way, this one the izz1 and izz3 are equal to each other because of symmetry reasons so let's say izz1 is equal to so technically this here is a rectangle right so it's a rectangle and the second moment of area is 1 over 12 the height the height being 14 that's the thickness as well so it's 14 cubed multiplied by 125 so that's that's it that's the second moment of area but that's about the centroid of one right we want to find the second moment of area about the centroid of the whole thing so we have to apply the parallel axis theorem so we add 125 times 14 so which is the area of that section that we called one and then we have to multiply that by the distance between the centroids, right? So it's the distance between this centroid and this centroid. So yeah, we know the distance from here all the way to the bottom is 150. And we know that this centroid is seven away, right? So we can subtract one, we can subtract seven from 150 and we get 143 squared so let's see what the first term is first of all we have times 125 divided by 12 so that's 28,583.3 and then plus and then we add up that which is the parallel axis theorem so that is that's a really long number so three five seven eight five seven five zero and if we add the two up we get this so three five eight one four three 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 point three and that's going to be millimeters to the power four which is the same as izz3 right so now izz2 equals so now we're just looking at the at the at this section here, which is given by at that it's given by that part. So that's just one over twelve times, 
and now we have to use the height so to find the height we have to use 300 so it's 300 minus and then we have to subtract 14 twice so it's going to be 300 minus 28 so 300 minus 28 is 272 let's use the same color so 272 cubed multiplied by the thickness which is 9 so 272 cubed is equal to 272 cubed times 9 divided by 12 so i'm getting this much again really long numbers because we're using millimeters to the power 4 now we don't have to apply parallelaxis theorem for this because the centroid of this is the same as the centroid of the whole thing due to symmetry so the total izz you just add the three of them up so you add this one twice right so three five eight one four and then multiply by two and then add the second one which should give us this okay um, and if you if you want you can convert it so it's this multiplied by 10 to the minus 12 meters to the power 4 but i'll try to leave it like this for now and uh, get everything in millimeters but let me actually rewrite it as so if i move the decimal point maybe let's see one two three four five six places so i'll call this 86.7 times 10 to the power 6 millimeters to the four so just to do an approximation um and just use three significant digits okay so we found izz for the whole section and now we can start solving this and find the shear stress so the first thing we have to find is the shear stress at the junction between the web and the flange so in other words if i zoom in on what's happening at the top so we have a junction and then there's a jump in the values of thickness right and then the centroid is somewhere here and we know the coordinate of the centroid so the centroid is at a distance i should be 150 let me just double check so it's 150 from the very top okay and this section has a centroid as well and the centroid of this is situated at it should be seven yeah it's seven centimeters like that okay so let's find the first moment of area of this first of all because we'll need that to find the stress both here as well as here so the first moment of area is equal to the area itself of that section which is 14 multiplied by 125 so it's 14 times 125 and then multiplied with the coordinate so the distance from here to here which is 150 minus 7 so it's the distance between the two centroids essentially so that is going to be 14 uh, times 125 times 143 and that should give us the first moment of area which is this much remember this is millimeters cubed same units as for volume although this has a completely different meaning than uh, than volume right so we found q and now we are actually ready to put everything into the shear stress formula so the shear stress remember is v multiplied by q over and then we have i z z times the thickness so let's first look at the shear stress calculated here right let's call this point a let's call this one point b 
So as you'd expect, the two values, the, the only difference between the two values is the fact that they depend on different thicknesses because V, Q, and I, Z, Z are, are all the same. So V is 200 kilonewtons, so it's 200 times 10 to the power 3 newtons, and then multiply with Q, so Q is... 250250 over and then we have IZZ which is 86.7 times 10 to the 6 so 86.7 times 10 to the power 6 this is in millimeters to power 4 which means the thickness at A is has this value which should also be in millimeters and that is 125 125 so that's basically it. and now we're gonna do uh the division so this becomes 4.618 or let's call it 4.62 and remember we're using newtons and millimeters so this is going to be newtons per millimeter squared which and you can actually check this this is the same as 4.62 mega pascals okay so that is going to be the stress at a the shear stress at A, and now we're going to find the shear stress at B. The shear stress at B is going to be relatively straightforward. So it's the same as this, except, you know, the only difference is that the new thickness is not going to be 125. It's going to be the thickness at B, which is 9, according to uh, the problem. So it's, uh, I'm just going to copy the same numbers as above, but I'm going to change 125 to 9. Like this and as you can imagine this is going to give us a much bigger value of stress because that's how fractions work right if you divide by a lower number you're going to end up with a much higher value in the end and that should give us let's see what we end up with 86.7 divided by 10 to the 6 divided by 9 and yes we end up with 64.14 megapascals so even though we're almost in the same region, right? So even though we haven't actually moved uh, across this junction significantly, such that the Q, the first moment of area changes. So even though we're using the same value of first moment of area, if you go just below or just above that junction, the shear stress jumps dramatically, right? So if you go from top to bottom, it jumps from 4.62 to 64.14 megapascals. And it will keep increasing until it reaches the midpoint. And that's what part B of the question is asking. So for part B, we have uh, calculate the maximum value of shear stress in the section stating clearly where the stress occurs. So we know that tau max happens at the centroid. And we know where the centroid is as well. So the centroid is actually in the center of the shape because it's symmetric. And now we just have to find what that is. So tau max is, as before, we have V times Q over IZZ times T. So we know it, almost everything. So we know V as 200 kilonewtons, so 200 times 10 to the power 3 newtons. We know IZZ, because we already did that in part A. And that is 86.7 times 10, 86.7. 7 times 10 to the power 6 millimeters to the power 4. And we also know the thickness, right? Because where, where we have the centroid, the thickness is just 9 millimeters. So the only thing left to do is find the first moment of area of that section. So remember, what we're actually trying to find is this. So this is the shape. Right. This is where we're trying to calculate the um, uh, the first moment of area. Um, th sorry, this is where we're trying to calculate the shear stress, which means that we're trying to find the first moment of area for this section and for this section as well. So we have two things that we have to add up. And the centroid of this section is here. The centroid of this section is here. So the distance... The distances are, one of them is 7, and the other one is 
we have 14 plus 272 divided by 4, right? So the whole thing, so from here to here, it's 272 by 2, which should be equal to 136 millimeters right because the whole thing from top to bottom is 272 and when i mean say from top to bottom i mean from here uh to the next junction so this value here becomes 82 right so the distance from the top to this centroid is 7 the distance from the top to this centroid is 82 and the distance from the top to the centroid of the whole thing is of course 150. I'm not writing units, this is going to clutter the drawing. So let's find what Q is. So Q is equal to Q1 plus Q2, where Q1 is the first moment of area, let's say, of this bit, and Q2 is the first moment of area of this bit. Right, this is 2. So Q1 is going to be equal to the area which is 14 times 125. Okay, and then times the distance from here to this uh, centroid, which is 150 minus 7, so it's 143. And then plus, and we've actually already done this before, if you remember. Uh, so to this, we add the first moment of area of that tall bit. So that's 9 times 136 uh, times the distance to the centroid so the distance to from here to here is 136 divided by 2 which is 68 so the first number should be that 250250 and to that we add that new bit, which is given by 83,232, and the value turns out to be, in the end, 3,232, and we get 333,482, remember that's millimeters cubed. Right, so that's the first moment of area where the shear stress is maximum, which is here, this is the centroid. So tau max is equal to 200 kilonewtons, so 200 times 10 to the power 3, times this Q, which is 333, and then we've got 482 over, and then divided by the second moment of area, which is 86.7 times 10 to the power 6 times the thickness which is 9 so this should give us the maximum shear stress so let's see how much that is and we divide that by 86.7 by 9 and by 10 to the power 6 and we have 85.47 uh, that is megapascals And that's it so if you try to find the shear stress at any other point you'll notice that it will be a value smaller than this so this is the maximum value of shear stress and it does uh, happen at the centroid and that is the end of the question